since I'm satisfied with the testing of the Mac 17691 controller and pretty happy with my pot core transformers. I think it's time to move on to making the hopefully final power supply. The schematic layout for the power supply is very similar to the test board. I did include a reverse voltage protection diode just to keep me from doing something crazy. I'm going to use the under voltage lockout. I don't want it to run if I accidentally plug in a 12 volt supply to it. And more importantly, I'll use the over voltage shutdown. If it is not switching, the controller can handle 70 volts without shorting out. But with the rectifiers I'm using, I need to limit the input voltage to less than 27 volts. I really need to order some 60 volt shocky rectifiers. The current 40 volt ones are running right on the edge. Also, I'm extending the soft start time from the default of 5 milliseconds to 20 milliseconds. The fan startup was the reason for this. They are quite a load when they start up. While I don't expect there to ever be a large voltage difference between the two grounds, I thought static discharge might be a problem for the magnet wire insulation, so that is the reason for these parts. And then there's the output rectifiers, capacitors, and zener diodes. Now there is an error here, and I looked this over three times before I ordered the PC boards, missing it every time. I'll come back to this in a bit. And finally the power connectors, power to the fans interface, and power to the main control board. The PC board layout is again about like the test board I made. It's a bit smaller, has some mounting holes, and a power jack at the edge. A little more planning and I could have just made one PC board, but I really didn't expect the first controller chip I tried would work out so well. I'm becoming more and more fond of sorter paste. I found out that if I heat the PC board a bit, the paste will transfer to the pad just great. With the board at room temperature, it was hard to get the paste to transfer from the needle to the pad. Here I did get the board a bit warmer than I would like, but it's fine. This is the main reason I'm liking the solder paste. The SMD parts will stick to the pad and not to the tweezers, even if the tweezers get a bit of flux on the tip. And that really brings down the frustration level installing these tiny parts. I'll do a bit of preheat Again, this is where the sorter paste is working great. It's just enjoyable watching the parts snap into place on the pads. I'm just delighted with that. can tell how much extra sorter paste I use by the number of sorter balls I have to pick up around the chip. Only one around the no-lead chip. That was just about the right amount. With all the parts on the PC board except one, it's time for a new transformer. All the previous transformers had the primary in the center position between the secondary windings. I think I saw a diagram of a high frequency transformer laid out like that, so that's what I was doing but I want to put some Kapton tape in between the primary and secondary windings, so I thought the easiest way would be to do the primary winding first, tape, and then the secondary windings. So I have 21 turns consisting of two strands of 30 gauge wire for the primary, then a layer of Kapton tape. Now the secondaries I'm winding all together, four turns of two strands of 30 gauge, 
six turns of a single strand of 30 gauge, seven turns consisting of two strands of 34 gauge, and 12 turns of two strands of 30 gauge wire. And there's still a bit of room on the bobbin. With the transformer in place, this is the first time powering up the board. Now what the video doesn't convey is the faint odor of the magic smoke. I can't see it, but something got hot. A little checking and I discovered I have no negative voltage supply. My first thought is I messed up the 34 gauge wires for the negative supply transformer winding. But the odor was not of melting wire insulation, it was of semiconductor epoxy. What it turned out to be was a reverse capacitor. It's backwards in the schematic and I put it on the board just that way. Stupid carelessness on my part. What I was smelling was the 100 milliamp rectifier. The two strands of 34 gauge wire will supply enough current to destroy a 1N4148. So I replaced the rectifier and I replaced the capacitor as well, just in case. With the problem fixed, it was time to do a bit of testing. The first thing I noticed was this is the warmest I had felt the transformer get. So I put the temperature probe on it and loaded it for close to 6 watts of output power. Temperature rise on a transformer is at least 7 degrees centigrade higher than any of the others I've measured. And when I figured up the efficiency, it's running at about 83%, the worst efficiency I've measured to date. From the temperature rise of a transformer, I know where the wasted power is going. But is it from the primary being wound on the inside? Is it from the secondaries being all together? Or a combination of both? That means another test transformer. This time I'm going to split the primary up into two sections, 11 turns for each section. Even though the last transformer had a 21 turn primary, I've done other tests to see if there was much of a difference between a 21 and 22 turn primary. Really couldn't tell if there was a difference in efficiency. I just wanted to keep the two primary sections symmetrical for this test. And all the secondaries are positioned in between the two primary sections so the secondaries are very close to the previous transformer. At around 6 watts output, changing the transformer layout dropped the temperature rise about 6 to 7 degrees centigrade, and I'm at very close to 90% efficiency. Not as good as my best transformer, but a lot better than 83%. So the major problem was not the secondaries being all together, but the primary being on the inside and all wound together. I think this might be an example of the proximity effect at work. With the primary all together on the inside, it is three layers deep. Now when it is in the middle of the secondaries, it is still three layers deep, but I believe it is acting like it is only one and a half layers deep. Of course, when it is split into two sections, each section is only about one and a half layers deep. I'm going to have to dig into this a bit more. Since the bulk of the power will be coming out of the 12 volt secondary, I may try interleaving the windings a bit more just to see what the effect is. But before I go crazy with the transformers, I want to get a properly working power supply. I can easily live with 90% efficiency. First test is of the under voltage lockout. About 14.5 volts before it will cut on. That will work great. And for the over voltage shutdown, I'm looking at 28.5 volts. That is a bit higher than I want, but these voltages are with the nearest resistor values I had on hand. So 60 volt shocky diodes and some more resistors go on the need to order list. I now have a working power supply for the DCL1. Probably not the last transformer I wind for it, but I have outputs of 12.7, 5.8, 3.7, and a negative 6.3 volts. 
haven't tested a lot of different load conditions, so still need to come up with an easy way to do that. But I'm really pleased with it so far. Thank you for watching.